focus on headline. And let's take a look at what major issues are making the headlines today on Focus on Headline. For this, joining us in the studio today, we have our reporters in Yoon Se-young and Kim Min-ji. Guys, welcome back. Good, Good evening. evening. How are you guys surviving? What do you mean? The weather? heat? Yeah, heat wave. I didn't know which one you were asking, the heat or the stock market. Uh, or the child. <laughs> <laughs> what? The children. Oh, I do say, oh, I do say third child. I was no, like, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. Never, uh, never. I'm, I stayed indoors for the most part. That's how <laughs> I'm surviving. Mm. No, the reason why I was like, which one? Because Seung and I, we've been talking stock oh. markets. And Do I did not mean, even mention it. Well, this morning I was like, oh my goodness. See, the thing is, it's not mine. So mm, it doesn't matter. It's mm, my kid's mm. portfolio. And they're looking at a two, 20 year plan. So it's not going to matter whatsoever. Mm. But it still hurts, right? It still hurts. Well, the reason why we say this is boy, today was, I don't know, you could call it, is it an over exaggeration to call it Black Monday today? I mean, it was a pretty, pretty bad day in the stock markets today. The Cosby plunging more than 3% at the start of the morning. Uh, it dropped below the critical 2,500 mark today. Declines coming amid some uh, negative uh, employment figures coming out and also fears of recession in the United States. We've talked about how uh, what happens in the United States uh, is correlated to what the stock markets are like here in South Korea, given the fact that the vast majority of the money coming in and out are from the foreign investors and in the U.S. market as well. Minja, you're going to start us off a terrible day in the stock markets today. Uh, give us some uh, more on what happened today. Sure. So South Korean shares declined for the second consecutive session on Monday, prompting the activation of trading curves for the first time in four years. Now, this drop comes amid a global decrease in risk appetite due to fears of a U.S. recession. The benchmark USP index fell by as much as 8.77 percent at 2,441.55 points when it finished today, and this is and this is followed by a 3.7 percent drop on a Friday, making its worst recession since March 2020. So this drop is equivalent to a loss of 235 trillion won or 183.3 US billion US dollars in market capitalization. In the stock market, foreign investors are net sellers, indicating a continued capital outflow. And specifically, they have sold a significant amount in both the stock market and the Kospi 200 futures market. Meanwhile, the $1 exchange rate started a trading at 1,359.1, up 3.1 from the previous day, reflecting the ongoing volatility. So the decline in Kospi is in line with the trend in the New York stock market, which had also in two consecutive days of sharp decline due to poor manufacturing and employment indicators. On August 2nd, major U.S. indices, including the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and Nasdaq, also significant drops. The U.S. Department of Labor reported a higher-than-expected unemployment rate for July and a lower-than-expected increase in non-farm payroll employment, further fueling uh, the recession fears. Across various sectors, the Korean stock market is seeing widespread declines with nearly all sectors, including insurance, financials, machinery, and chemicals, to name a few, and it has been experiencing a significant drop. At the same time, the Kostak index is also down, reflecting a similar uh, trend of widespread selling pressure. Looking at uh, the futures for the S&P 500, which had uh, enjoyed a pleasant year so far until this, uh, they're down 2.5% right now in the futures for the S&P. The uh, Dow Jones uh, down 1.56% on the futures right now. James, I don't even know how, how you're listening to the program right now. You should be panicking right now on <sighs> what's, what's going on in the London Exchange. Yang Gurum saying it's time to buy stocks. I bought SM Entertainment today. I don't even know why you would buy stocks right now because you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. Fears is it's going to be a continuous sell-off right now. I know that people are saying, well, buy on the dip, buy mm -hmm. on the dip. But mm -hmm. however, the big question is, where is the bottom? Mm. No one knows where the bottom is right now. But Minji, tell us about the factors contributed to the market decline and what measures were taken to prevent ex excessive volatility. 
Well, market analysts are noting that the decline is due to the market reflecting various negative factors that emerged over the weekend. However, there is some hope that upcoming reports such as that the cakes and services at PMI in China and the U.S. ISM services at PMI might provide some relief in uh, if they exceed market expectations. So the significant fall we saw today triggered trading curves of sidecar and a circuit breakers on the Kospi for the first time since 2020. They were also activated to the junior Kostak as well. The sidecar is activated when index futures fall or rise sharply and halts program trading for five minutes to curb steep price movements. And circuit breakers, which halt all trading of stocks and derivatives for 20 minutes, are activated when indexes fall or rise more than 8%, which was the case today. So these are measures that designed to prevent excessive volatility in the markets and overall the financial markets are in a state of heightened alert as investors react to economic data and global financial trends it's uh it's it's weird just i'm looking at the stock markets right now i'm looking at what went up and what went down i don't know why the inverse uh dropped uh, nearly 30 percent but these this is the future which means that if the future inverse s&p 500 inverse uh it's futures uh, down 30 30 percent which means that people are betting that there's going to be i guess a rebound here is what mm-hmm. i'm thinking uh i'm not an expert but uh, it seems like at least looking from this people are saying that it might actually go up uh people are betting on futures for s p 500 this is not an inverse this went up 30 percent how come my s p 500 didn't go through it <laughs> anyways <laughs> Terrible stuff going on today. <laughs> not mine, not mine. My son's portfolio, I should say. Uh, in response to the current market volatility uh, and the conditions that uh, it faced uh, today, Kim Byung Hwan, the newly appointed chairman of the Financial Services Commission, also made a statement. He emphasized the necessity for a comprehensive approach to debt issues. Uh, Sian, let's get uh, more on his remarks. Sure. The new chairman of the Financial Services Commission, Kim Byung-hwan, presided over the four major financial risk inspection meeting on Monday, where macroeconomic and financial experts gather to discuss future response measures. The four major financial risks identified are household debt, real estate project finance debt, also known as PF debt, and small business and self-employed debt, and the soundness of the secondary financial sector. As we've already experienced before, these issues have a significant direct impacts on the lives of ordinary citizens and can lead to substantial social repercussions and domino effects in the economy. In recent years, significant changes in both domestic and international economic conditions have been observed, and with concerns over a slowdown in the U.S. economy causing major global stock markets to waver, South Korea has been immediately affected. That means that South Korea's domestic financial system is vulnerable to external factors. And in regards to that, Kim pointed out that the high debt ratio and reliance on debt compared to two major countries are fundamental reasons for the vulnerability of the domestic financial system to external shocks. According to the Financial Services Commission, as of the end of last year, private, including household and corporate debt in South Korea, stood at 4 4,959 trillion won, amounting to 206.5% of the gross domestic product or GDP, which is a very high figure. All right, then what, what, what's the uh, Financial Services Commission's strategy to resolve these uh, debt issues? I mean, it's not a secret mm. that we are facing a high, high debt uh, ratio right now. Right. First, in terms of household debt, the commission is strengthening the DSR debt service ratio management system, which sets loan limits based on the borrower's income. Simply put, this means not lending amounts that are deemed beyond the borrower's repayment capacity. And regarding PF debt, the government will manage the issue based on the business feasibility assessment of individual projects. And for small business owners who have incurred debts and are facing economic hardship, due to unforeseen circumstances like COVID-19. Support measures include adjusting debts to match their repayment capabilities. In the secondary financial sector, where concerns about soundness have grown, efforts are being made to enhance uh, what's called loss 
absorption capabilities through provisions and capital expansion. Kim also stated that the government plans to strengthen the resilience of the Korean stock market to withstand external shocks and to create an inv investment environment that investors can trust. And to achieve this, the Yoon song yeol administration's corporate value enhancement program announced earlier this year will be further reinforced and the Financial Services Commission also plans to push for improvements in the short selling system and expand the investment base in the domestic stock market through tax support and other measures. Let's move on here. More economic figures to take a look at. Uh, global investment banks recently lowering their growth forecast for South Korea, citing various economic factors. Now, this adjustment follows a recent announcement from the Bank of Korea about the nation's GDP performance in the second quarter. Minji, let's get more figures here. Sure. So global investment banks have recently lowered their growth outlook for South Korea. And according to the International Finance Center on August 1st, the average GDP growth forecast by eight major global investment banks for this year has a drop from 2.7 percent at the end of June to 2.5 percent at the end of July. And this is a decrease of 0.2 percentage points. Several banks have adjusted their projections. Barclays revised its forecast from 2.7 to 2.6 percent. Citibank lowered its estimate from 2.5 to 2.4 percent. And Goldman Sachs reduced its forecast from 2.5 to 2.3 percent. And JP Morgan also decreased its projection from 2.8 to 2.7 percent. So UBS, which has the which had the largest forecast of 3 percent at the end of June, dropped it significantly 2.3 percent by the end of July. This matches the projection from Bank of America Merrill Lynch, which did not change its forecast. HSBC maintained its projection at 2.4%, and Nomura kept theirs at 2.5%. On July 25th, the Bank of Korea announced that the GDP growth rate for the second quarter was a, a minus 0.2% compared to the previous quarter. The bank noted that while private consumption and construction investment improved significantly in the first quarter, temporary factors that led to domestic recovery in the first quarter actually disappeared in the uh, second quarter, making the base effect more clear. And now, despite this, the Bank of Korea stated that the growth rate in the second quarter aligns with their annual growth forecast of 2.5% for this year. Well, I mean, the thing is, the first quarter had really good figures because again you mentioned base effect the last mm -hmm. year's first mm -hmm. quarter was terrible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so comparatively it's an increase on year and that doesn't necessarily mean that the economy is doing very well mm -hmm. it just means that it was better than the year before mm -hmm. which was that mm -hmm. bad mm -hmm. and right now a lot of economists we continue to that, i think that was one of those things that uh, was a professor young just said who we're going to be talking to uh later in the program mentioned when we got the first quarter numbers he said well the gdp numbers for first quarters look positive but all the signs do not show that Korea's economy is improving right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of mystery as to how this uh, GDP figures even came about in the first place. You look at the second quarter figures, not so good. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about private consumption, which is one of the reasons for why uh, the DP has been pushing for that tw uh, 250,000 uh -huh. one voucher, right, to inject more money right, into right. the economy, which... The PPP also does have a fairly good point in saying that that's only going to increase uh, the inflation figures and that mm -hmm. people are going to have a harder time afterwards. It's such a temporarily, temporary thing with 250000 mm -hmm. which is like what, like not even $200, right? right and nice. so it's not going to make a big deal. And so right now the economy does not look good. What are we going to do about it is the big question here. Nevertheless, we also know that amid... Uh, the, I guess, economic struggles that the, ever, the everyday people are facing right now. Uh, lawmakers continue to bicker and mm -hmm. fight over bills, uh, same bills over and over again, while the opposition parties, including the main opposition Democratic Party, uh, finally passed the so-called yellow envelope bill on the first day of the Provisional National Assembly session on uh, in August. 
Uh, this follows their recent solo pass unilateral passage of the broadcasting bills last week. We talked about the four contentious bills. Mm-hmm. Seung, let's get more on this. Yes, today the Democratic Party of Korea unilaterally passed the amendment to the Labor Union and Labor Relations Adjustment Act, known as the Yellow Envelope Bill. And this amendment aims to expand the scope of industrial action for subcontracted workers and limit companies' claims for damages against the striking workers. And as ex- expected, the ruling People's Power Party boycotted the vote in protest and announced plans to recommend that President Yoon song yeol exercise his vision power. And this scenario mirrors the recent passage of the four broadcasting bills by the opposition. And in the National Assembly's plenary session today, the amendment received 177 votes in favor and two against out of 179 attendee- attendees. And notably, Reform Party members Lee jun Seok and Lee Ju young who supported the broadcasting bills, voted against the Yellow Envelope Act this time. And the People Power Party opposes this amendment, labeling it as a law that encourages illegal strikes. And if President Yoon exercise his veto power, it is likely that this bill related to laborers will be discarded upon revote. And this exactly repeats what happened in the 21st National Assembly, leading to growing frustration among the public who witnessed the same legislative conflicts over identical issues. Well, I mean, but then the thing is, is that not all strikes are illegal, right? And mm-hmm. so this actually prevents uh, labor unions from ever striking. I mean, like mm-hmm. all laborers. I mean, you know, we've talked about uh, how there are labor movements uh, in the early 80s and so forth, the 70s and the 80s that uh, led to what we have now. And this is thanks to the labor unions and so forth. Mm-hmm. But this completely stops it. And so there's, again, back and forth, back and forth here. This is not the first time we talked about the yellow envelope bill. Uh, we usually use the term, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? What is it? Chilmal Pai Chilmal Pai right? This is when, like, the end of July, mm-hmm. beginning of August, right. is vacation season. Mm-hmm. Well, President Yoon beginning his vac- summer vacation. Uh, this does also come as he reaches the midpoint of his term. Uh, major legislative bills recently being passed at the National Assembly with uh, the PPP calling for another uh, veto, presidential veto. I'm not sure if he's really going to fully be able to enjoy his summer vacation, to be honest with you, with all of this. But uh, it is going to be both uh, time for resting for the president and some intense planning as well. Uh, Minji, let's get more on President Yoon's vacation. Um, President Yoon suk yeol began his summer vacation today, and this break is not just for rest, but also for planning the administration's policies for the second half of the year. So he'll be spending his vacations in various provinces with a flexible schedule, and many of his staff have also taken their vacations to coincide with his. President Yoon plans to travel across the country, setting an example to boost the domestic economy. He emphasized the importance of summer vacation as a time for recharging and revitalizing the local economy. And during his vacation, he will also encourage military personnel and visit traditional markets to listen to public sentiment. Last year, President Yoon visited Kunsan, where significant investments in secondary batteries were made, and the naval base in Jinhae. This year, he's expected to spend a significant amount of his vacation time on political planning. Several key bills driven by the opposition party have recently passed national Assembly. This includes the four broadcasting bills and the bill on the provision of 250,000 won to all citizens as well as the yellow envelope uh, bill. It typically takes about a week for a bill passed by National Assembly to be sent to the government and the president must either promulgate it or exercise his veto within 15 days of receipt. President Yoon will be considering whether to exercise his veto on these bills during his vacation and there is a possibility that he might take action while on vacation uh, depending on the timing of the bill's transmission and cabinet meetings. In addition to these legislative considerations, President Yoon has other pressing issues to address, and these include the comprehensive real estate measures to be announced this month 
the possibility of a special pardon on Liberation Day and a planned visit to Czech Republic in September for a nuclear power cooperation. Yeah, you know, when your approval rating is not doing fairly well, uh, Mm -hmm. it's really hard Mm -hmm. to really enjoy your summer vacations, right? Uh, We have two different uh, approval ratings, uh, opinion polls that came out. uh, One indicating that uh, his approval rating is at 26.5%. Uh, with the ruling power, People Power Party at 30, 31.6, uh, DP at 42, which is an mm-hmm. unusually high number there. Uh, Real Meter says mm-hmm. that uh, President Yoon's approval rating has gone down for the first time in four weeks at 32.8%. Uh, the ruling PPP at 38.5, uh, the main mm-hmm. opposition DP at 36.3. Uh, this is the latest one from Real Meter. Usually, people like to look at Real Meter uh, mm-hmm. polls for maybe the, you know how the, I guess the, the the public sentiment is usually like, and mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't look good, right? I mean, it's in the low 30s. It's been kind of uh, lingering around that area for quite a bit now, and so uh, they can't really enjoy uh, his summer vacations. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather, uh, something we really have been enjoying. Uh, relentless heat wave continuing to batter the nation. Uh, usually we say once the monsoon season is done and over with, in comes the heat. But uh, boy, the heat came in really hard. Talking about super tropical nights. You guys ever heard of super tropical nights? <laughs> this is my first time this hearing is a about first... super tropical nights. This is the first year I've ever heard of super tropical nights. Mm-hmm. I've always heard of tropical nights, right? But super mm-hmm. tropical nights are apparently when nights are like 30 <laughs> degrees Celsius oh, and yeah. over. Today I was coming back from work. Uh-huh. It wasn't even 8, 8 a.m. Uh-huh. And it was 32 degrees. That's ridiculous uh, wow. figures here. Scorching temperatures persisting across the country. There's been a number of casualties. Mm. Property damage is being reported as well. Seyang, obviously the heat is not on our side here. Let's get some more details of what happened over the weekend. Sure, it is unbearably hot. And even at night, when you're finding it difficult to sleep without air conditioning as the tropical or super tropical nights continue. The heat wave is more than just extreme temperatures. It is a dangerous natural phenomenon that leads to significant loss of life and property. According to the Ministry of the Interior and Safety, from May 20th to August 3rd, there have been 1,500 46 reported cases of heat-related illnesses, and this figure is 10 more than the same period last year. And heat-related illnesses refer to physical harm caused by a rapid increase in body temperature, including heat cramps and heat strokes. And unfortunately, 13 people have lost their lives due to these conditions this year, with five deaths occurring over the weekend alone. And the data shows that the incidence of heat-related illnesses increases with age, with those aged 60 five and older, accounting for 31.4%, that is 485 cases of the total. And the majority of these cases occurred outdoors, with workplaces standing at 29.6% and fields uh, 15.9% being the most common locations. And the heat wave has also taken a toll on livestock. From June 11th to July 3rd, 257,483 animals, including 235,000 880 poultry have died. And fish are also affected by the abnormal temperatures with 5,867 halibut to die in six fish farms. And the intense heat gripping the nation is due to two high-pressure systems lingering over the Korean Peninsula after the monsoon season, trapping the heat. And this is expected this year is expected to lead this is expected to lead to a longer and more severe heat wave than usual this year. Talked about uh, how this time around, or I should say monsoon season time, uh, we have Mm -hmm. uh, farm produce products skyrocket. And now, because of this intense heat wave, Mm -hmm. uh, you have agricultural goods, uh, fishery goods, uh, prices set to skyrocket. Halibut is like one of the more affordable fish Mm. out there, right? If you like raw fish, I mean, this is, and especially farmed halibut are like Mm -hmm. even cheaper because wild ones are a little bit more expensive. But Mm -hmm. now people prefer the farmed ones because of Fukushima and stuff like that. Uh, uh But it's it's expensive now. Uh, it's, It's... I mean, you shouldn't actually be eating raw fish in this heat Mm. in the first place. Mm. But Yeju of all places, right? When we say like hot places, we think Daegu, Mm -hmm. right? Teprika. Yeju (laughs) is not one of the places that we talk about when it comes Uh to intense heat. Uh Sunday in Yeosu, temperatures Mm. reaching a staggering 40 degrees Celsius. Tell us more about this. 
Yes, although this is an unofficial record, the automated weather observation equipment in a village in Yeoju City uh, recorded the daytime temperature at an astounding 40 degrees, and this is nearly at disaster levels. Currently, heat wave warnings are in effect nationwide, with most regions experiencing peak temperatures around 35 degrees Celsius, which is higher than average for this time of year. And prolonged exposure to such heat can be life threatening, underscoring the importance of um, adhering to safety guidelines. It is crucial to avoid outdoor activities or work between 2 and 5 p.m., the hottest part of the day. And if you experience dizziness, nausea, or headache, seek out cool shelters or air-conditioned places uh, immediately. Additionally, it is important to be aware of air conditioning-related illnesses as well, which is called uh, ningbangbyong in Korean. Avoid creating large temperature differences between indoor and outdoor environments ventilate by opening windows uh, uh, windows every two to four hours and prepare long-sleeved clothing to prevent these illnesses. So everyone, please stay safe and cool during these extreme weather conditions. I'm going to be honest with you. If anyone in the office starts mm. opening windows, there's going to be a lot of <laughs> angry people, right? But like, you're supposed Ignore to, them. Ignore <laughs> them. Just try to ventilate You're supposed regularly. to do this right now <laughs> yes. because another uh, figure, sure. stark, mm. uh, figures mm. that are coming out last week, they were coming right. out saying that COVID-19 figures, mm. hospitalization right, right, from right. COVID-19 in the past four weeks has jumped 5.1%. Mm -hmm. And a lot has to do with the fact that, yes, there is COVID rampant right now, but mm -hmm. we're not ventilating the areas right, as right, much exactly. and there's air conditioners mm -hmm. so like all the circulate the virus the virus <laughs> is circulating among us you know sharing is caring but not virus mm -hmm. right and so there's a high number of uh, COVID-19 cases uh, that are coming up so it is it is important to mm -hmm. ventilate and I struggle with saying this because I know I'm gonna get mad if I see anybody <laughs> opening windows it is bad but just a tip I've gotten uh, what is it? Uh, heat stroke before. Mm -hmm. It's bad. You, you can't oh, drink yeah. ice cold drinks. No, it has no, to be no, lukewarm no. Yes, drink, yes. or else it's going to actually exacerbate things. I mentioned before that if you're looking, seeking to find a place that's really nice and cool, the bank is always the place. No one always is going to complain. Best. You're going to have to wait a long time, anyways. <laughs> Pretend to pull a number and just sit there and enjoy the nice, uh, cool indoors. Mm -hmm. We got uh, two stories to cover here. Uh, I know, again, we mentioned it's vacation season right now, but uh, stories like this make it a bit uneasy for us to really enjoy summers and uh, plan out summer vacations. Uh, first, uh, Korean air turbulence uh, from Incheon to uh, Ulaanbaatar saw massive turbulence, which saw a number of Korean air passengers <clears throat> suffer from, <clears throat> excuse me, minor injuries. Uh, there is an increasing number of jellyfish sightings on the East Coast, uh, which is terrible for people going out to the beaches and also impacting the fishing industry mm -hmm. as well. These incidents are just two of many things that are affecting the travel and leisure activities right now. Minji, let's get more on this. Sure. So several passengers on Korean air flight KE-197 from Incheon to Ulaanbaatar, <coughs> Mongolia, were injured due to severe turbulence. The flight, carrying 281 passengers, encountered strong turbulence at an altitude of 34,100 feet near the uh, Tianjin Airport in China. The turbulence caused the aircraft to shake for about 15 seconds, leading to in-flight meals falling and causing neck and back pain for about 10 passengers and four crew members. Fortunately, no serious injuries <coughs> were reported and Korean Air provided medical assistance upon landing Ulaanbaatar and all passengers completed immigration without any issues. In the other news, beachgoers along the East Coast are experiencing increased discomfort due to a surge in jellyfish sightings. This summer, the appearance of Nomura's jellyfish, known for their numerous tentacles and a strong venom, has been particularly troublesome. Vacationers report seeing jellyfish frequently and receiving warnings to avoid the water Water uh, significantly impacting their beach activities. Fishermen are also affected with catches dropping due to the jellyfish. The uh, Nomura jellyfishes, uh, the Japanese have been struggling with this. They've been doing all sorts of things uh, in order to get rid of them, but they reproduce so quickly, mm. so quickly that it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get rid of all of these. And they come in, they're huge too. And mm -hmm. I don't even think it's the same kind of jellyfish that we eat. 
You know, there's like jellyfish. I know, have party yeah. Right, right. I, is I, it I, real jellyfish? What? Have party Yeah, it is. It is. It is? Yeah. What do you think we're eating? <laughs> Just like so <laughs> It's it's a different kind. It's not the Nomura jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> Did they call it jellyfish for a, as a joke or something? No, no, no. Like I thought it was like a, um, a different kind of fish or something. It is definitely not a fish. <laughs> it's a jellyfish. It is. It definitely is a jellyfish. I'll tell you that. It's chewy and delicious. Yes. Let's talk. Let's talk North Korea because over the weekend, North Korea announced the deployment of their new tactical ballistic missile launchers. They're saying that uh, they're sending two hundred fifty or so to the front line units. Uh, experts are saying that the development could significantly alter the dynamics of fire park exchanges between the two Koreas. Seang, let's get more on this. Yes, on Sunday in Pyongyang, the regime held a ceremony to mark the handover of 250 new tactical blasting missile launchers to their frontline military units. And these launchers were produced by major military industrial complexes. Missile launchers are as critical as the missiles themselves, as the location of the launchers determines the launch site, uh, making them prime surveillance targets. Additionally, launchers are fewer in number compared to missiles making them valuable assets. Notably, each of the 250 new launchers can carry four missiles, and this means theoretically that if all 250 launchers were activated simultaneously, they could launch up to 1,000 missiles at once. And considering the current number of South Korea's K-9 self-propelled howitzers and the range of their shells on all outward, though highly, highly undesirable, it would pose an unimaginable threat to South Korea. Still, it remains uncertain whether North Korea can consistently produce enough missiles to fully utilize these launchers. But uh, this unveiling demonstrates North Korea's intent to bolster its frontline missile capabilities and continue its illegal development of nuclear weapons and missiles. Again, I mean, it's uh, in the worst case scenario, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe they're saying that uh, they shoot uh, short range ballistic missiles that have a range of about 150 kilometers, mm -hmm. which would be enough uh, to cover at least send over to uh, Seoul, mm -hmm. right? In the Seoul capital area, being that it's going to be at the frontline units. Uh, let's move on here. Other developments in North Korea, despite the severe flooding on the Amnokgang River. Uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un criticizing South Korean media, rejecting the South's offer of humanitarian aid. However, he did express gratitude towards Russian President Vladimir Putin for his support. Minji, let's get more on this. Well, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has recently criticized South Korean media reports estimating the number of casualties from the flood along the Amnokgang River, stating that the enemy remains the enemy. This marks his first response to the South in context of the recent flooding. On August 3rd, Korean Central News Agency reported that Kim Jong-un on August 2nd visited the Air Force helicopter unit involved in rescuing over uh, 4,200 residents from the flooded areas. And and during his visit, he awarded medals and gave a speech commanding the unit for their bravery and efficiency in the rescue operations. Uh, he emphasized that there were no casualties in the most affected areas like Shinjiu and uh, praised the rescue efforts that saved around 5,000 people, including those by the Air Force helicopter unit. Despite South Korean government's to, uh, offer to uh, relieve supplies through the Korean Red Cross on August 1st, North Korea has not responded and has continued its hostile rhetoric against South Korea. So analysts suggest that given Kim's remarks, it is unlikely that North Korea will accept South's offer. Uh, in contrast, Kim Jong-un expressed his gratitude towards Russian President Vladimir Putin for his offer of humanitarian aid following the floods. According to the news agency, on August 4th, Putin conveyed his support and willingness to provide assistance to North Korea, and Kim thanked Putin and mentioned that while North Korea has national measures in place to recover from the floods, they would consider seeking Russia's help if needed in the future. Okay, now here's the thing, right? Number one, we knew that North Korea was not going to say yes to the humanitarian uh, offer because mm -hmm. they know that Russia was going to help. Now, if you were to tell me you had to go through a rescue effort that say 5,000 people, there's absolutely no way that this has caused no casualties. There's mm -hmm. no way this is something, something like this is happening. 
consensus right now is that there is many, many casualties mm -hmm. right now. A lot of people have been killed from these uh, flood, mm -hmm. and uh, knowing that every year during monsoon season, they do have, uh, I guess, a number of people dying from the floods. Mm -hmm. This scale means that it's an even higher number. <clears throat> they don't want to make it look like things are really bad right now. Yeah. They don't want to make it look like they're desperate right now. So is it really the Korean media that's lying? Or is it Kim, Kim Jong-un that's lying about all of this? All right, guys. I want to thank you so much for coming on this day in the uh, intense heat wave that we have been experiencing. Please stay healthy, stay cool, stay dry. And uh, we'll see you guys again uh, later this week. Stay cool, everyone. Bye. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.